In life, we trust people with important responsibilities. We trust doctors with our health and well-being. We trust bus drivers to get our children to school safely. And veterans trust the Department of Veterans Affairs to protect their personal information, one of their most valuable assets. At the heart and core of this responsibility are two essential disciplines, data privacy and cybersecurity. We sat down with a few VA cybersecurity and privacy officers for their shared insight into proactive measures each of us in the veteran community can take to help keep personal information safe. My name is Tanya Meyer, and I work as a privacy officer for the Office of Information and Technology. So it's always good to be mindful of the information that we are disclosing online. Um, there's so much information out of, of, about us already. Um, that publicly, you can see where you live, uh, what your home is worth, your political affiliations, your religious affiliations. But information that we provide on social media platforms can can really, you know, cause some issues for us if we overshare that information. My name is Jason Anderson. I am a privacy officer for the Veteran Benefit Administration Central Office based out of Washington, D.C. One of the best ways or best practices that I've always used is to know as a privacy officer and as a veteran, less is always best. You know, the less information you share is always the best practice. My name is Jolyn Colliker. I am a division chief within the Cybersecurity Operations Center for the VA. Um, I am over a team that handles a lot of communications, um, external uh, information that goes out from VA. Do not tell your life story online. So do not advertise when you are going out of the country or out of town. Um, you know, if it's your birthday, that's fine. Make sure that you've got everything locked down so that, you know, only the people that you're actually really friends with or really connected to can see that. Um, you know, complete strangers can't go and look at your profile because it's public and find out that it's your birthday. If they can get a hold of your email address or any other additional information about you, they can use that information to access other sites that you may use. They can get into your email account, you know, your banking app, like that. Um, so just keep your private information private. In today's interconnected world, managing your online presence is more important than ever. Simple actions can make significant differences in safeguarding your data. Always treat the information that you're sharing as if something that you would have to ask yourself on as to whether or not you can hear it repeated again. Would I be okay with hearing this information again? If you're not okay with hearing the information again, then it's best not to share that information. And what I would say is consider the harm. If you're preparing to enter information onto a form or share information online, consider what harm could be caused by that. And if you have an option to refrain from that, please do so. And sharing that with your family and friends can help them be safe as well. So I would limit it to data that's necessary for your purpose and no additional data. People on the internet, yeah, we're all connected now, right? Like you can go in and make a, a friend, right? Well, they're still a stranger. You don't know this person. So if you wouldn't walk up to a complete stranger on the street and say, hey, my name is XYZ and I live here and my phone number is this and the last part of my social is this and my date of birth is this, then you shouldn't do it online to a complete stranger either. A cyber attack occurs every 39 seconds. And unfortunately, veterans are often targeted more frequently by cyber criminals looking to steal veteran benefits. Keeping in mind that you need to use proper channels, um, making sure that you're using VA sites or speaking with people at your medical center, for example, where you receive care, um, making sure that if someone calls and says they're from the VA and they need information, that you can verify the accuracy or legitimacy of that call before providing information. Typically, VA is not going to reach out to you in that manner. So you can say, I'm. I'm not gonna provide that right now, I'll call you back. And you can contact your medical center, you can contact your regional office if you have a pending claim. You can say, you know, I received a call, I'm concerned about it. Don't provide that information until you know. So when you're accessing your benefits and your resources, 
What you need to do is make sure that you are accessing the correct and appropriate website. There is something out there called spoofing. Now people can spoof an email address and pretend to be someone they're not. They can also utilize a URL or a website address that isn't exactly correct and that perhaps you've mistyped and you end up on you know, VA.com versus VA.gov, for example. Veterans or caregivers, whenever accessing information, one of the things you want to look at is the right to know this information. You have a right to know who all's access your record. You have a right to your first party information. And that is the veteran's right or the caregiver's right to the information that is documented in any of our systems. There's privacy officers all across VA. So at each medical center, there's a privacy officer. At each regional office, you can contact the privacy officer and say, you know, I've got a concerning issue. Um, someone's asking for my information. I'm not sure it's legit. Or sometimes maybe I've given my information already and I need to see what may, may occur from that. And the privacy officer at that um, medical center or that regional office can assist with those types of concerns. Data privacy and cybersecurity are a shared responsibility. The more you know, the more protected you'll be. Learn more by visiting digital.va.gov forward slash cyber and va.gov forward slash privacy.